Good evening ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. This evening I want to talk a few minutes about the treatment of deep venous thrombosis. You see, deep venous thrombosis is a very, very common condition killing thousands of people all across the world. You remember in pathology class we heard about Warhol's triad. When we hear about venous stasis, hypercoagulability, and also vascular injury, those are the common causes. But conditions like uh, cancer or immobility like a long flight, pregnancy, obesity, oral contraceptive use, they all lead to deep venous thrombosis. When you examine a patient and if he complains of some cough pain with dorsiflexion of the foot, we call that Homan's sign. I'm sure you are aware of that. And Homan's sign is seen in only 50% of patients. And so it's not a useful test and don't rely on Homan's sign to diagnose DVT. It needs a higher suspicion when especially if it comes again and again. You should also think about malignancies, lung cancer, prostate cancer, bone cancer. These malignancies, they increase the risk of uh, DVT in these patients. So in all cancer patients, uh, you should expect the increased risk of DVT. Now, that Diagnostic test of choice is duplex ultrasound. So this is a very nice, I mean, non-invasive. It does not expose patient to any kind of radiation and it is relatively cheap. So this duplex venous ultrasound is useful in diagnosing DVT. Now I want to talk about treatment of DVT. You see, there has been a great revolution in the treatment of DVT in the recent years. We have been using actually the unfractionated heparin all these years and which is being converted into comedin therapy and also low molecular weight heparins and keeping patients in the hospital and treating them with low molecular weight heparin for days and days and then converting them to treatment with the warfarin and then sending them home. It's like uh, a week of stay in the hospital. But Levine and the colleagues, they did a randomizer trial in Canada and now we can actually put a patient on low molecular weight heparin like anoxaparin, commonly known as Lovanox, like 1 mg per kg BID and we can send them home and slowly converting them to comedin. So that has been a great practice and uh, it actually proved a very, very uh, good measure in reducing the hospital costs and uh, I mean we can use those beds for other patients. So low molecular weight heparins like enoxaparin 1 mg per kg that's two times a day or FDA also approved enoxaparin 1.5 milligrams per kg once daily. There is another agent called tenzaparin. Tenzaparin at the dose of 175 units per kg once daily is also useful. Now a word about the differences between unfractionated heparin versus low molecular weight heparin. Unfractionated heparin is metabolized by hepatic mechanism whereas Low molecular weight heparin is metabolized primarily by renal routes. And bioavailability is fair. It's okay with unfractionated heparin, whereas it's excellent with low molecular weight heparin. Heparin induced thrombocytopenia is very, very less for low molecular weight heparins. And also the risk of osteoporosis is very rare. For example, with unfractionated heparins, it is little bit uh, high than low molecular weight heparins. And what test are you going to see as a laboratory assay of anticoagulant effects? 
in unfractionated heparin it is APTT activated partial thromboplastin time whereas in low molecular weight heparin it is anti tenure level so you should do anti tenure level to see the effect of uh, anticoagulation by low molecular weight heparins and in both cases for reversal of anticoagulant effects for example if there is a uh, too much anticoagulation, APTT is going higher and higher and in those cases for reversal we use protamin. In both cases protamin is useful. So slowly we change these patients to comadin. Comadin at a dose of like uh, 5 milligrams per day and uh, you need to adjust it. Not many patients respond to 5 milligrams. Some patients may uh, may need like 4 milligrams or 2.5 milligrams or some people may go as high as 15 milligrams. I have used some patients like 17 milligrams on some of my patients.